All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel. Uh, I'm not going to hold you long today. There's been a lot going on with the NBA as far as trades, free agency, and the draft is concerned. And uh, I did a lot of research and uh, actually put together a whole lot of scripts for videos and just never got around to posting them. So some things have changed since I've done those. So some of those that I didn't post, I'll go ahead and uh, re-edit and I'll post those. But uh, thanks for your time visiting here. Uh, real quick, what I'm going to get to is uh, the uh, new the Brooklyn Nets rebuild. Looks like the best thing to do for the Brooklyn Nets is to just tear it up, tear it down, and uh, start all over from scratch. But uh, I've got some moves that they can make that will be very interesting and intriguing, and. Uh, you know, it's not going to put them to the top of the Eastern Conference, but they still will be competitive. So, but before I get to that, make sure you like and share and subscribe. And um, open for comments on this. You know, this is a what if scenario, but I did some research on this, and this would actually work out. Um, I am one that I don't believe in uh, trading players to quote-unquote bottom feeding teams I believe in getting players to uh, teams that are competitive or in a situation where they'll step in and make those teams a lot more competitive so um, without any further ado let's get started uh, first one of the first things I want to do is just thinking about the WNBA and you know possible expansion for the w WNBA and I listed down 12 uh, locations that will be think would be uh, pretty pretty cool if we had uh, franchises in those locations so I'm just gonna go down the line real quick before I get into the next video um, number one on the list I have is the Detroit Shock just because they are a former franchise I believe they moved down to Tulsa Oklahoma but uh, it was a very successful franchise there in Detroit. I, think, I believe it was led by Bill Lambert as the head coach, and they won a few championships. So uh, that would actually be one of the first places that uh, I would look at as far as expansion of the WNBA is concerned. Um, the other ones, they're in no particular order. Uh, I have Philadelphia acquiring a team, or Philadelphia expansion into Philadelphia, and um, I have some nicknames I put down. Some may be corny, but you know, like I said, I was just brainstorming, and this came across my mind. So, I had the Philadelphia Spirits um, got a 76ers team there. So, why not have a uh, WNBA team there as well? Um, Portland, uh, Portland Trackers, is a nickname I came up with for Portland, and. It is a huge basketball city with the Trailblazers, and I'm surprised they don't have a WNBA franchise there in Portland. Uh, another location is Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas, the state of Kansas, and uh, Kansas City is known for basketball, and it's just amazing to me that they haven't been able to um, get another NBA franchise there. But I think that would be a prime spot, even without a NBA franchise for a WNBA team. Uh, uh, nickname for them, Kansas City Boogie. Uh, going down the list, Columbia. Columbia, South Carolina. They had a Columbia Swarm. Uh, South Carolina, I believe, was the reigning, the reigning NCAA Women's Champion. And they always seem to have a uh, pretty good team. You always hear about them, Baylor and UConn. So, to me, that's a no-brainer there, putting the WNBA franchise in South Carolina. Ohio, not going with Cleveland, but I'm going with Cincinnati. Cincinnati Pumas would be the nickname uh, for that franchise. Memphis, I think Memphis should have a WNBA team. I mean, look at the success they've been having with the Memphis Grizzlies as of late. As of late, so uh, I had a Memphis groove. Uh, New Orleans is another place that I think is right for a WNBA franchise. I have a New Orleans force. Uh, Miami, kind of hard to believe Miami doesn't have one down there as a counterpart to the Miami Heat. 
Uh, but I have that one as the Miami Flair. Kentucky is another one, a uh, bluegrass state. Everybody knows about Kentucky basketball, men and women's basketball. So it's amazing that they don't have a uh, NBA franchise or WNBA franchise there as, as well. So I have them with the Kentucky Oracles. Uh, next location is Denver. I think Denver is popping and they love their sports in Denver, Colorado. So I almost definitely put a WNBA franchise there in Denver, uh, calling them the Denver Rise. And last but not least is uh, Fresno, California, the Fresno Sequoias. Uh, that will be an expansion team in the WNBA. Just, you know, doing a little bit of research on that area and it is a. Uh, Pretty pretty professional area there. Got Fresno State there, and uh, we already had a LA Sparks that takes care of the uh, uh, Southern California region. So we'll go ahead and um, put a team in Fresno. That's just my thoughts. I was just brainstorming on it, and uh, I will have the Eastern Conference. You have uh, Detroit, Philadelphia, Columbia, Cincinnati, Miami, and Kentucky. Uh, those will be the expansion teams for the Eastern Conference. For the Western Conference, you will have Portland, Kansas City, Memphis, New Orleans, Denver, and Fresno. So that was just my two cents on there, and I was just brainstorming. I said, hey, let me take a look and see who doesn't have a WNBA franchise. Uh, moving on now to what I wanted to discuss about the Brooklyn Nets. I want to keep calling them the New Jersey Nets, but... Um, we all thought they were set up for success with Steve Nash as head coach, and you know they they did make a lot ton of noise. You know they made it into the playoffs and whatnot, but got thumped out by the Boston Celtics, and actually I believe they got swept by the Boston Celtics. So changes have to be made. I mean you had too many stars on that team, Fred them to not even win a game in that series so uh, just my thoughts as far as what could be done as far as uh, the rebuild of the Brooklyn Nets and I'm sure we're going to see some moves here soon looking at the situation with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving but um, me personally I would just kind of blow the whole thing up and give uh, Steve Nash a, f a fresh start with a pretty much a whole new roster so Here's my opinion, and, and like I said, this is some research that I did, and I think these moves would work out for the players being involved in the trades and the players uh, that are going to be picked up by a free agency uh, by the Brooklyn Nets. So first and foremost, let's get right down to it. There's a lot of speculation on where Kevin Durant should go and where he wants to go. In my opinion, the best place or one of the best places for Kevin Durant uh, to be traded to would be to the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, they just acquired, I um, can't think of the gentleman's name, from the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, they, of course, you got Trey Young and you got John Collins. So, I mean, they have a pretty solid roster already. And I think Kevin Durant being added to that roster along with what they have already would make them a, you know, a, a front runner to win the Eastern Conference. That's just my opinion uh, with that. So, but what I have is uh, Kevin Durant and a future first round Brooklyn Nets draft pick going to the Atlanta Hawks for Clint Capella, Boga, Bogdanovich, AJ Griffin, whom they just drafted, and uh, Jalen Johnson. So that will be one deal that I will swing. And like I said, I know that it will work out for the Atlanta Hawks. I mean, you have to put them in the top five, if not the top three, as far as the odds to come out of the Eastern Conference with a deal like that being made. And uh, Brooklyn, you're not getting, you know, hosed over on this one because, I mean, you're getting Clint Capella, the big center. Um, Bogan is a shooting guard. Getting A.J. Griffin, who going to have a pretty good season as a rookie um, and you get Jalen Johnson small forward for Kevin Durant 
Moving on, as far as Kyrie Irving is concerned, like I said, we're just going to blow the whole thing up. And this is a pretty intriguing trade proposition that I have here. Uh, in Boston, and, uh, Kyrie Irving, Joe Harris, and De'Ron Sharp to the Los Angeles Clippers for, a, ready for this one, Paul George, Reggie Jackson, and Brandon Boston Jr., I don't know if that ship's going to sail with what they have already as far as the Clippers are concerned. I mean, there's really the only way for them to go now is backwards is what they have. So I think they're kind of in the same situation as the Brooklyn Nets. So that's why I suggest that trade there. Uh, Kyrie Irving would step in and play alongside Kawhi Leonard. And you get Paul George coming in. And pretty much he's going to be the leader of the Brooklyn Nets along with Reggie Jackson as the point guard there. Um, Brandon Boston Jr. is a young player. So you get, you know, you get, get a couple of veterans back in return. And uh, you send Kyrie Irving and, and Joe Harris, who I believe is going to be recovering from his injury soon. And uh, De'Ron Sharp out there to Los Angeles. And it gives both of those franchise is a total different look kind of like a breath of fresh air and I know Kyrie Irving, Irving has some things going on and I'm not going to choose size one way or the other but he's still a good ball player and a lot of speculation that had him going to the Lakers but I think this is a better fit for him going to the Los Angeles Clippers moving on here and just a side note for you uh, I guess Blake Griffin is looking at joining the Golden State. I'm sorry, I gave that one away. Looks like he's talking about uh, signing with the Los Angeles Lakers, but I mean, it looks like the Lakers are not going to be too much far from what they were this past season with a lot of players that are up there in age. Um, so I don't think it's feasible for Blake Griffin to go to the Los Angeles Lakers. I mean, there's going to be a lot of publicity um, and opportunities for him from a financial standpoint with, uh, you know, deals and things like that. But to me, the best place for Blake Griffin would be the Golden State Warriors. Um, they're not going to need him to do much, but when he does step in, he's able to step in and contribute and uh, I have him and Kessler Edwards actually signing with the Golden State Warriors. I just thought I'd throw that in there as a side note. Another big trade I would make, and like I said, you're just cleaning house here. Uh, and this one is pretty intriguing too. Would be trading point guard Ben Simmons to the Denver Nuggets for Michael Porter Jr. Uh, both of those guys have been out this significant time, but you know when when they're on, they're on. So I think that would be a good swap. Um, like I said, Michael Porter Jr. is recovering from uh, the injury that he had going on with his back. And I think he would be dynamite with the Brooklyn Nets. I mean, he would actually bring uh, a lot of excitement to the Brooklyn Nets. Like I said, this would be a complete overhaul. And um, Ben Simmons to the Denver Nuggets, I mean, that's just something I would want to see. I would really want to see how that looks there. And, like, and, and Ben Simmons gets another fresh start in Denver, and he's not going to be caught up on to be a superstar, an all-star. And uh, Michael Porter Jr. gets to uh, actually go into Brooklyn, and you know that would be something to see him playing alongside Paul George. Uh, so those are three trades that I have right there. And uh, also another trade I have, and I know they just signed Roy Royce O'Neal to a contract, but uh, I would trade Royce O'Neal to Golden State for James Wiseman. Eventually, he's going to get healthy. Um, eventually, he's going to get healthy and, uh, and and be back to the player that he was coming out of Memphis. So I would uh, send Royce O'Neal to Golden State for uh, James Wiseman. And another last-minute trade I came up with was Seth Curry. Uh, trading Seth Curry to the Lakers for a future draft pick uh, somewhere down the line. 
So those are some of the trades that I would make if I were a GM. And uh, and like I said, it just it helps out the teams that those players are being traded to. And at the same time, you're rebuilding Brooklyn, but you're not tanking or sacrificing the season. I still think they will be competitive. Um, I still see them being a playoff team with the experience they're they're acquiring. Moving on, as far as some uh, undrafted free agents to fill out the roster, uh, one player I'm going with is Jose Perez out of Manhattan College. Um, kind of surprised that he didn't get drafted, but that's one of those players where a smart GM is uh, quote unquote can see the forest for the trees. And uh, it would be a great pickup. It would be a great pickup. I mean, the danger with that is if you have someone like someone like uh, Golden State uh, discover him and sign him, then uh, we'll probably be giving them a couple more championships. But uh, anyway, a little more information about Jose Perez. He's a 6'5", 220-pound uh, small forward. Kind of plays like Kate Cunningham of the Detroit Pistons. He has that that's his kind of style of play. He can get to the basket. He can shoot the three, and he's a great defender. Uh, the senior season, senior season at Manhattan, he averaged 18.9 points a game, 3.2 rebounds per game, and 4.5 assists per game, and shot 39.9% from the field. Uh, I'll leave a link here on this video in the description, and also at the end of this video, I'll leave a link where you can take a look at some of his highlights but I'm surprised that uh, the Knicks didn't discover him also Jared Houston out of Emerson College uh, 6'11 center and I mean he's just a defensive monster and a scoring machine I think he had something like 91 blocks in his senior, se senior season, season I'm sorry at uh, Emerson College and the guy averaged a double double for the season. And to be honest, looking at him play, it he plays similar to Nikola Jokic, but he's a lot faster. I mean, he you know he, he runs the floor like Jokic. He could pass like Jokic, but there, there's something more about him. Not to take anything from Nikola Jokic, but um, Jared Houston would be a, a great find, and I think he would fit in with the Brooklyn Nets as well. Another player is point guard Bryce Fowler out of Sacramento State. Um, surprised he didn't get drafted somewhere. And uh, he's 6'6", 215 pounds shooting guard, averaging nine, average 19 points a game his senior se season. 5.3 rebounds per game and 4 assists per game. And shot 49.9% from the field. Uh, surprised that uh, Portland didn't snag him in the draft or... or um, bring him in as an undrafted free agent. I mean, the guy is really good. Um, and rounding out, as far as the undrafted free agents are concerned, to, to fill out this roster is uh, shooting guard Peter Kiss. I don't know if a lot, any of you guys are familiar with him. 6'5", 200-pound 200 pound shooting guard um, out of Bryant. Average 25.2 points per game, 5.8 rebounds per game, 3.2 assists per game and shot 45.6% from the field. So that rounds out the roster for me. Uh, like I said, it looks like the whole thing is going to have to be blown up there. But, you know, I wouldn't say that they're in a category where, you know, you would get into that, what was that called with the Philadelphia 76ers, the process. I don't think their process would be long with the moves that would be made um, that I'm suggesting. So just rounding out the roster here, just going over what you're looking at as far as the starting lineup is concerned. Uh, we got, of course, you're going to have Paul George as your shooting guard, Reggie Jackson as your point guard. Uh, as far as your power forward is concerned, you got Michael Porter Jr. And uh, if he is anything like he was before he uh, re-entered his back, then look out. I mean, that would be a great find, um, a great trade right there. And also, as far as the small forward is concerned, Jose Perez, once you see the footage on him, you'll understand 
why I have him in there as a starting uh, small forward. And then Jared Houston as well, I have him in as a starting center. So uh, that, that, that will round out the starting lineup there. Uh, you may be able to shuffle Jared Houston and uh, depending on the, the, the status of James Wiseman and his health is concerned, and um, you can interchange either either one of those two, either uh, James Wiseman or Clint Capella in the paint, and you got solid bigs in the paint. Uh, so, moving on as far as your second unit is concerned, uh, Pat, Patty Mills is still here. Uh, you have him as a point guard in the second unit. Bogdan Bogdanovich, you have him as your shooting guard in the second unit. And like I said, the center's position is pretty much up for grabs. I mean, you can eject Capella, Wiseman when he's healthy, or Jared Houston in, in that position. You could swap those for starters or for uh, reserve players between those three and still get the job done. So, But for this second unit, I'm going, uh, based upon uh, the health of James Wiseman, I'm going with Clint Capella. Um, A.J. Griffin, I'm starting A.J. Griffin. Well, A.J. Griffin will be coming off the bench. Uh, and let's see here, he'd be coming in as one of the forwards, and uh, Nick Claxton and I have him as the power forward uh, coming off the bench for the second unit, so that's what your second unit be looking looking like, is uh, Pat, Patrick Mills, Bogdanovich, uh, Clint Capella, A.J. Griffin, and Nick Claxton, who just signed the re-up re with the uh, Brooklyn Nets, so that would be my second unit. There, uh, I did have Bryce Fowler and uh, Peter Kiss is consideration for that second unit, but uh, after doing a little more research, I'm gonna go ahead and keep Nick Nick Claxton uh, in there with that second unit as well as Adrian Griffin. Now, as far as the uh, reserves are concerned, uh, Jalen Johnson, a small forward, he still be uh, he, he'll be a reserve. Uh, Brandon Boston Jr. He'd be a reserve. James Wiseman, and like I said with James Wiseman, depending on his progression as far as his uh, return from injury is concerned, he may just go into the starting lineup. Shooting guards, Cam Johnson, uh, Bryce Fowler, and uh, actually, no, actually I'll take that back, not Bryce Fowler. I have uh, Peter Kiss uh, as another reserve. And as far as your two-way players, we're going to have David Duke Jr. and uh, Bryce Fowler as the two-way players on this roster. So that's just my take on it. And, you know, like I said before, um, moving these players to where they can compete for another championship in regards to Kevin Durant going to Atlanta and Kyrie Irving going to the uh, Clippers and of course Ben Simmons going to the Denver Nuggets. I mean that makes those teams um, even more competitive than what they are already. And um, like I said, let me know what you think, what your opinions are on it. But I was just kicking it around, and like I said, excuse me, like I said, uh, it looks like gonna have to, they're gonna have to blow that whole thing up in Brooklyn and um, actually get uh, Steve Nash his team, one that he can groom and um, grow on his own. And, uh, yeah, we'll just have to see what happens. They expect some moves to be made here in the next few days. But uh, any extent, let me know what you think. Thanks for checking this out. Bye.